This has been a Clear Springs Entertainment production. On this episode of Parks E, Trip Across America. For Chris Park, America is a way of life for him. He loves to go back every chance he can get, to meet new people, and to catch up with old friends. So for five weeks, he explored America again. And along the way, he interviewed some cool people and explored some cool new cities. From New Zealand to America, watch as he explores America and interviews some cool people. This is Parks E, Trip Across America. So you are a person of many talents. We can list acting, yoga, ballroom dancing, and pageant coaching. So how did all this come about? So how did you get on all these kind of things? Oh gosh, that's a, a loaded question. Um, I think it all goes down to I really like attention. And so being in the spotlight was always something that I like to do. So that's, uh, I started in pageantry. That was one of the first things that I started in. And then I started ballroom dancing after that. Took yoga to become stronger in my ballroom dancing. Fell in love with yoga, became a certified yoga teacher. So it all just kind of snowballed. I think what started at first was pageantry, so. So how was pageantry different, to, like with pageantry it's different to acting, how is it different to you? How is it different than acting? I actually don't think it is different because pageantry is a performance on stage, so whether you're stage acting or whether you're acting in front of a camera, pageantry is putting on your best self on stage, whether you're in heels, a bikini, an evening gown, it's, it's all an act, it's all a performance. So they actually are pretty parallel, they're very similar. So, so, so how did you get into acting? So how, or how was your start in getting into acting? You know, acting was, again, stemming from my like attention. And so it was something that I pursued when I was much younger. Uh, kind of let it go for a while. And then I got into the Houston film scene just via some website, Southwest Casting. One thing snowballed into another. And then I got a couple local parts here. But um, really haven't had time to do that much this last year. So the last thing I filmed was Dropa. That was last January. And then I've been pursuing other things ever since. So, so you've just completed a batch. You've just completed... Uh, you'll finish the degree, so what was that degree and how do you, how do you feel that's going to help you with your career and all that kind of stuff? So I did, I just graduated with my degree in kinesiology from Sam Houston State University. I'm very proud of that accomplishment. It was something that I worked for for a very long time. I had quite the unique college journey, so it's something that I'm very proud of. Um, it is going to benefit me in the future because I'm going to continue to pursue my education. I've already started a master's program, so I have another two years ahead of me of a lot more intense studies, hence why I'm not pursuing ACT anymore because academics are taking precedent to that. But are you happy with the response of the people who have seen your work and that responded to it? Are you happy with people's responses to the acting work that you've done so far? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I had a blast with every project that I did. Um, there's some really goofy stuff out there, such as, you know, conjoined and stuff that I think is really campy and is probably going to stand the test of time, and I'll probably be known for that as opposed to some of my other work, but that's fine. I, I've loved the response. I've loved getting to meet the fans. I've gotten to go to um, a couple fan events, and it was a really, really fun, unique experience. So, so have you had any problems with the acting, or has it been all been smooth sailing? I wouldn't say any, no, not necessarily any problems. I wouldn't say it was smooth sailing. It was a lot of work. Um, some movie shoots were 14 plus hours. It was exhausting, but uh, no, no problems. Just a lot of work. So now how did you get into ballroom dancing? Uh, ballroom dancing came about when I was 18 and wanted to start up a new hobby. And so a dance studio had opened up close to my house and my mother had suggested that I go give it a shot started taking lessons, fell in love with it, turned out I had a talent for it, turned pro, and the rest is history. So you guys are going, so you got, you're going this weekend to do some, you're in a competition this weekend? Mm -hmm. We are traveling to Minnesota to compete in the Snowball Dance Sport Championship, so it's going to be very cold, but we will be um, competing on Saturday and Sunday. So how often do you go to competitions? Our goal right now is to compete once a month. So we, um, any given weekend, just depending on where the competition is that we want to go to. So our goal right now is once a month. So how hard is it to get into, how hard is it to get into the competitions? Do you have to submit, do you have to submit a video or? No, anyone can enter. You just, you send in your entry fees, you just show up. You don't know necessarily who's going to be there to compete against. So you, you just show up and you dance and you work your butt off when you're not competing. And then you just hopefully see results each and every time you compete. 
So what do you hope 2018 will have in store for you? I hope 2018 is a very productive year, especially when it comes to our dancing. We've been working incredibly hard, working with some fantastic coaches. I hope that we start to see some results. I hope the master's program is forgiving and it's not as hard as I'm making myself think that it's gonna be. So I hope that academically it's gonna be a great year. And um, I think that with my pageant coaching, we're gonna have a lot of great um, clients competing this year as well. So I think 2018 is gonna be a great year. So how does it feel being able to coach people because you've had that experience of being in pageant yourself? How, how does that feel? How does it feel helping these people to achieve their goals and winning, winning events like that? I absolutely love it. Um, I've been coaching for almost eight years and I have to say that it's one of the most unique experiences to see someone who walks in who's not maybe able to stand up straight or have any confidence and I teach them how to walk, how to talk, how to present themselves, it tends to grow their confidence and they grow into these beautiful, well-rounded, very, very confident young ladies. So it's a very unique experience and I love being able to be a part of their journey. So you, you have done modeling in the past, you're not pursuing that anymore aren't you? Or if something comes your way you might... I mean if the right opportunity comes along but again my focus is on academia and on our ballroom dancing so... That's cool. So you're now managing a yoga studio. How, how does it feel to be able to manage a yoga studio and have look after lots and lots of clients? And I love it. Um, I just recently started the job and I feel as though um, I'm a great fit for the studio. I'm very organized. Um, I have my bachelor's in kinesiology. It goes hand in hand with being a certified yoga teacher. So um, I know our product, I know I can sell it well, and I know that um, we're gonna have a really successful yoga studio. So it's been a great experience so far. So, so, so you're doing the yoga, so how, how important is, do you think yoga is to stay in and keep in shape? Oh, it's fantastic. I'm, I mean, yoga won't necessarily make you lose weight, but if, if you're already on a fitness journey, yoga is incredibly important to to keep up with your fitness journey because if you're if you're working out you need the ability to stretch and relax your body so that you can continue to pursue you know whatever your athletic or fitness goals are so yoga is just a great hand in hand partnership so what do you what what do you do to if you have what do you do when you have a bit of downtime what do you do to relax and i cuddle with my cats that's what i do to relax i have four amazing cats and my favorite thing to do is just sit on the couch and have them all climb on me so you also, I've noticed you also like to help looking after looking after animals that are homeless or. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I foster dogs for Rescue Pets Movement. So it's an organization that takes dogs out of the Houston City Shelter and transports them up to northern states that don't quite have the overpopulation problem that Houston has. So they pull dogs off the euthanasia list. We foster them in our home for about a week, and then we send them up on transports, and they go up to Colorado to find their forever homes. I've got, got about three more questions, and so what would what, what we find you listen to at the moment? Listen to as far as music? Yes. Oh gosh, um, well a lot of yoga music in the yoga studio, but if I'm in my car, it's probably on an Aerosmith radio station on Spotify. I nice. love the 80s music, I'm a child of the 80s, so typically, typically listen to 80s music. Cool, so have, what have you seen recently that you, that's inspired you? What have I seen re as far as yeah. movies? Yes. Well, gosh, um, what was the last movie we saw? I like Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I've seen every single Star Wars episode at least 12 times. Um, so I, I do, I know there's a lot of people out there who do not like the new the new trilogy, I but I it. love- I haven't seen it yet. So. I love anything and everything to do with Star Wars. If you have Luke and Chewbacca in a film, I'm happy, so. So my last question, which is the one that I talked about earlier, is the gimmick. Have you ever bought an As Seen on TV product before? No, I have not. Um, I'm pretty pragmatic and practical, and I tend to, I don't shop with anything I see on TV. I think that's a little goofy, but, um, I mean, the infomercials are pretty funny to watch, but no, I've never oh, yeah. bought. I've never bought a, an S scene on TV product. Here are a few hints and tips to help you along the way on your on your traveling journey. If your accommodation has safe, if they have a safe, put the passport in the safe. If you lose a lot of stuff, it's going to be annoying. But if you lose your passport, it's going to really be annoying. So you'll know where it is at all times. And just remember, when you leave your accommodation pick it up after, before you, before you leave the combination and go on your next destination. 
Also, when you're booking accommodation at Hot Tippers, be mindful that the price changes on when the season you're going into the places you want to stay at. And even though, like me, you may have paid already paid for your accommodation, but you're still going to have to pay what is known as a holding fee. And just be mindful of that you've got to pay a holding fee. The holding fee changes in price, of course. Try public transport. It's fantastic. You'll get around. It's great to get around and it works really well. And you'll get to, you'll get to be part, you'll get to be what the locals are like. And it's fantastic. I took it basically everywhere I did in America and I found it really easy to get on and work around it and it's fun to explore going on public transport. Another hot tip. I know you all love your big fancy DSLR cameras. I have one. I'm filming with one right now. But don't wear it around your neck at all times. You don't want to look too much like a tourist. So what I did was I used a little action camera to film my, all my footage when I was in America because I can fit in my pocket and it's a little more discreet and I look less like a tourist. Another hot tip, when you're going exploring, plan ahead each day. Make sure you've downloaded the maps onto your phone so when you are exploring these lovely cities, places you're going to, you'll have them on your phone all the times and you'll know where you're going. And if you do decide to take ride sharing naps, so if you go out one night and you're not comfortable going home, you're a bit scared about going home late night in this country or city, city you're not familiar with, make sure you are uh, accessible and they can see you because some of them will charge you a fee if you don't rock up. HS Green in Houston is my kind of place. I found this place when exploring the Galleria region and it, was a fan and it is a fantastic healthy fresh food place. You get salads, you get burgers, you get turkey chili, which I've never had before. It's amazing. Everything is freshly prepared and, ha and I think was really healthy. It had amazing salad. I had an amazing Angus burger the first night I was in Houston. I didn't realize that, in, that I forget in America that they ask you how you want your meat done. I said well done and it was delicious. Good selection of craft beers, lovely staff. It is an independently run restaurant. If you're in Houston in the Galleria region, I recommend you check out HS Green. It's fantastic. This has been a Clear Springs Entertainment production. Thanks for watching.